Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi, and joined the National Agricultural Research Service of the Indian Council of Agricultural Research. He served as scientist in the Central Soil and Water Conservation Research and Training Institute, Dehradun. He then joined the Natural Resources Data Management System Division of the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, in 1994 as Senior Scientific Officer and was serving in the same department as Scientist F Director till May 2008. Thereafter, he was appointed as the Counselor Science and Technology in the Embassy of India, Washington, D.C. during 2008 to 2012. At this responsibility, he handled the India and USA Science and Technology cooperation at policy, projects and program levels in the sectors of health, energy, climate and environment and education. During this September 2012 to 2015, he assumed the responsibility of Director Indo-French Center for the Promotion of Advanced Research, a bilateral organization to promote collaborative research between India and France in cutting-edge science and technology. Currently, he is serving as Head and Advisor Scientist in the Science for Equity, Empowerment and Development Division of the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. Dr. Devapriya Datta was deputed to the Blackland Soil and Water Research Institute, University of Texas, Texas, USA as UNDP visiting scientist during 1998. He completed his postdoctoral fellowship in Geo-Information Management from the International Institute for Geo-Information Science and Earth Observation the Netherlands in the 2003 and 4. He was awarded Senior Professional Research Fellowship on Groundwater Governance from International Water Management Institute, Sri Lanka in 2006-7. His areas of expertise and research interest are application of geoinformatics for natural resource management, focus on land and water, watershed management technologies, geoinformation management and capacity building for local level planning, and international SNT cooperation in the context of sustainable development goals. He has number of publication in national and international journals, journals sorry, and has authored three bodies. Wow. So uh, we can all see now, although we all know, sir, but uh, now I'll just hand over to him for the talk. Sir, over to you now. Uh, good morning and thanks. Uh, I will just uh, good morning and thank you, Dr. Poonam, uh, for this my introduction. And uh, I'm really humbled. So uh, today's uh, topic of uh, you know this interaction is the SNT interventions in fighting COVID-19 pandemic, and I uh, welcome you all uh, in this you know the Friday morning. So uh, what currently we are the all over the world uh, we are concerned about this guy, this uh, you know the small guy like you know, whose size is uh, approximately 0.1 to Micron, like you know, it varies from 0 0.06 micron to 0 0.14 micron, and uh, so uh, I think as we see that the what the science and technology interventions has been, uh, you know, the uh, has been used to contain this guy. So uh, I, I thought that let us first know this corner, uh, this uh, little guy, like you know, who is in the headline and put all the other uh, you, you know news is on the back uh, burner so uh, this is a coronavirus as you see here like you know the main, mainly it has an uh, it, this is its rna and uh, this is, is an envelope uh, this uh, envelope protein, uh, protein as you see this the n protein like you know which is here like the nuclear nucleus capsid protein is bound to the 
RNA genome to make this nucleo, uh, nucleocapsid. And the spike protein, like basically by now you know this, uh, you know the, this hair and its spike is very well known. And it has an envelope protein, like you know, which is being used to enter into human body and membrane protein. So uh, uh, rather than uh, you know, like I uh, speaking about, I thought that let try to understand before going into SNT interventions, what is the uh, you know the science and its structure behind it. So in place to place, I will take a help of. Uh, you know some of the available uh, you know videos like which are there So, uh, as you see, like, you know, in this, uh, you know, the virus, the main uh, part is it's, uh, you know, this RNA, like, you know, which, which is being contained by this, you know, envelope protein. Uh, so, the coronavirus, like, as we see here, this uh, uh, the coronavirus of COVID-19 is a new virus, but it is from the same family, as you know, is this SARS-CoV, or the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, which was identified in 2002 in China. And the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MARS, which was uh, identified in Saudi Arabia in 2002. So how dangerous is it? Uh, how contagious is COVID-19? If you see with these other, uh, you know, the virus, uh, COVID-19, uh, you know, the average number of the people infected from one affected individual is quite low. It is, it's around like, you know, three, 1.5 to 3 people. If we compare with the other uh, major virus, like as you see, the fatality rate is quite low. The, the, uh, the highest fatality uh, rate is in Marburg virus, which was identified in, uh, you know, the 1967. Ebola is around 40 and Hendra, and as you see here. So uh, the, the message which should go that it's not that fatal. So the fatality rate, if you see, look into it. The, uh, you know, the other viruses, the, the Spanish flu, uh, so here it is, the transmission is 1.5 to uh, 2.5 or 3.5 and the fatality is 3%. So the message is, uh, it is not that, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, fatal, but it spreads. The main problem with that, it spreads a lot. And there is much to learn about this, this newly COVID-19. And uh, like how it spreads, let's now look at it from... Uh, you know, this uh, animations video, like how it spreads and therefore what are, you know, the...
distance between yourself and others by staying home as much as possible. If you have to go out, aim to keep a minimum of six feet between yourself and others when possible. Now, what for more information, visit the website for the Centers for Disease Control. So, so as you see, like, you know, this is the science behind its, uh, uh, you know, uh, its spread. And why uh, our Honorable Prime Minister has told that keep that do gach ki duri. If you look into this, uh, in the global outbreak, uh, in, uh, in, in 31st of December, WHO alerted Chinese authorities of a string of pneumonia in Wuhan. And, uh, you know, the, by this 23rd of January, China has in a very high, like this type of an outbreak. In India, the first case came in around the end of January. And maybe uh, by the end of February, there are, you know, the, the outbreak uh, started here. So currently, if you see here, like this is the spread on 13th of May, all over the world by WHO. And uh, like, uh, so uh, if you see here, like what is the situation in currently uh, in India? So here, uh, like, you know, this is a... Uh, a, a dashboard which has been created at in IIT Bombay. As you see here, like you know, this you can see that today's like what are the confirmed cases, and you can see here like you know how uh, in the, uh, the Ministry of uh, like these are the total cases, these are the active cases, and you know like how many of the deaths, and you can see here the district wise, you know, district wise how the spread is. Uh, So, uh, but how, like in a, by today or uh, just now, uh, the people who are in Maharashtra or who are people in the Gujarat, like who are organizing this, you know, like in these three zones, that the red zone, uh, the green zone, and the, uh, um, uh, you know, red, green, and the orange zone. So, this is from uh, Ministry of Homes, uh, you know, the directives. This classification is multifactorial, it takes into consideration the incidence of the cases, the doubling rate of this uh, disease, the extent of the, uh, the extent of the testing and the surveillance to classify the districts, and districts will be considered under green zones if there are no confirmed cases. So, uh, based on that, If you see, like, you know, this is the current, uh, you know, the, the hotspots of the mapping of the uh, COVID. And I, I have already discussed with you, like, you know, this, the, how these red zones and the, you know, the orange zones and the green zones are identified. So, the currently uh, around the, the green zones, around 170 out of 720 districts of the India uh, are identified as, an, you know, the hotspot of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 170s are the green zones. Others are the hotspots in different way. So, in this spread of this, um, uh, you know, the coronavirus from one to others, there is a term which probably you should know about, the super spreader. Super spreader is an infected person who infects a number of other individuals directly. Directly, This happened in the disease, uh, in the common flu, as you see in, uh, in, a, in, in, in case of the SARS virus in Hong Kong in 2003. The super spreaders was very high in case of Mars. It was high. Currently, like you know, as you see here, the infect directly and indirectly. This is the ratio. Uh, it's basically, this is the uh, you know the examples of the super spreaders in uh, in uh, Singapore. And uh, so this depends upon the the spread depends upon the immune systems of a person's the degree of the contact, travel patterns, and uh, and also the person's. Uh, how they uh, sometimes the persons they spread without showing any symptom they are asymptomatic nature if you see this spread of uh, covid it can be divided into these three phases the first is is basically the pandemic phase through which we are going now there is an 
the the lockdown period is there slowly the lockdown period is going on like it, it is going away and uh, we are entering into the phase 2 and the phase 3 is the post lockdown phase which now we are concerned about that you know to start our uh, life beyond this pandemic phase in this context the role now i will slowly come into the role of the science and technology interventions into this different uh, you know the phases and the first uh, like once this uh, you know this virus it spreads as we have seen that the, sp that the spread of this virus is quite spatial temporal nature starting from wuhan then you know through the air route it came to the different parts of the uh, you know the world mainly came into the airports in the you know urban areas from the urban areas it is slowly now going into the rural areas where the main issues of that is because in india the majority of the people live in the rural area how to improve the immunity of the people how we can isolate the migrants because you know in the indian rural area the isolations it's not a part of it's very difficult to be a part of the social systems and how we can protect the health workers because this is a problem we are learning out of our experience in the you know the urban area how to protect our health workers so in order to track that there are many you know the techno geospatial technology has been used very nice platforms has been used so uh, you know like uh, when the, we have understood that there are many platforms but what we needed is an integrated geospatial knowledge infrastructures in uh, which can seamlessly provide that the different data sets which can help in this containment of the covid and also the beyond covid life that like, you know, how to plan it uh, uh, understanding that the india uh, the department of science and technology is the survey of india around that you have developed a platform and uh, apps sayog has been developed for capturing the data which has been used in different uh, you know the uh, the the states and we have a state special data infrastructure this is an example of the uttarakhand state special data infrastructures where the different you know the covid related data can be captured this shows that the spatial distributions of the uh, covid isolation centers so that you can identify that and you know, where that patients should be kept you know the district wise the positive cases you can track them and also they you know how the district wise home quarantine you can identify using the geospatial technology uh, similarly you should know the government hospitals which treat the covid patients which can be done through the geospatial uh, you know the technology this is an example of a bihar like in you know, one of the districts uh, one of the states which is getting uh, uh, you know prepared for the post covid uh, you know this this pandemic situations which can become pandemic in the states because a lot of you know this uh, migrant laborers are going back to bihar so understanding that there is in bihar uh, uh, state remote sensing application centers where under science and technology councils state science and technology councils has developed an exhaustive you know this um, dashboard for tracking the movement of these uh, laborers and the you know the isolation centers and the other infrastructures which is needed so uh, i will now just uh, share with you that in some of the uh, 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 you know like the, the uh, contributions of science and technology players uh, for different parts as as you see the as you get a data the data is the most important part of containment of this uh, uh, you, you know the dis disease and you have seen that you know in india we have hugely used it now the most important is that how uh, you can survive the surveillance system in india is a coronavirus surveillance system has been developed which is a unique tracking mobile applications and it has an like you know strong uh, the integrated systems of as you see the uh, the gps and also an on the ground uh, the system it has the system is get an uh, alert if a geofencing is violated by any quarantine persons it is now being uh, uh, implemented similarly uh, there is an the modeling of the epidemic spread in the indian urban conditions it this is from the iisc institute of science this uh, study has been done uh, it it assist epidemiologists in the decisions makers with understandings of the effects of imposing and lifting various kinds of the restrictions uh, as you see this is an agent based simulator so it simulates that if the number of the content uh, uh, you know the how it changes and when the uh, you know the containment should be so uh, that's covid 19 monitoring 
developed in a record time to deal with the pandemic, as you see here uh, on your, um, you know, the mobile. This app enables the live surveillance, monitoring, tracking, reporting, and the major bulletins on that. This has been launched and proven to create detailed health profiles. Uh, it has been used in currently in uh, three uh, different, uh, uh, you know, the states. Uh, there is an interesting, uh, you know, the, uh, the software has been developed, which is called, you know, the Covet. As you see here, Covet is basically a shield which vibrates and flows in case someone breaches the user's space in uh, one meter. The device, which can be worn as a pendant, comes equipped with a hand wash reminder. It features with a beep in every 30 minutes to remind that the user to uh, wash his or her hands. It is a low cost, easy to carry device. This technology is, is uh, ready for mass uh, productions. And, uh, you know, Aradhya Setu, you know, it is a success story and it has become a part of the whole, uh, you know, the, the, the containment strategy of, of the government of India. There are uh, some apps which have been developed, like, you know, for this tracking and the surveillance. One uh, is, I, I don't know whether you know or not, this is a quarantine, uh, quarantine in the app. We is used to track people if they are escaping, uh, you know, the quarantine. Asymptotic carriers uh, they have been a cause of concern for the medical community globally. These individuals may be positive, but if a user leaves a specific quarantine zone, then they get geofenced and it creates, a, a, you know, like the indicators. This app has been developed and the launch. And on the, on the right hand side, you see there is a corona coverage. This corona coverage is a risk tracking. Uh, you know the Android applications. This is uh, this is user's location is mapped through GPS on the app to assess whether he or she uh, uh, is a high risk geographical zone. Uh, similarly, uh, some of the states have uh, developed their you know the specific uh, uh, you know this type of an uh, app uh, app based interventions. On the top of that, you see for Maharashtra, which is the most affected state currently. Is a digital contact tracing app uh, which is called Mahakabat. State government of Maharashtra has launched it, and this uh, uses the uh, smartphone-based location services. So uh, I think this is this uh, you know like again it uses the geofence uh, you know uh, and it is available in the Google Play so that you can download and uh, you can use it. Similarly, on the left hand side you see this is in Tamil Nadu police has used to quarantine monitor. On the right hand side the Karnataka police can be used for quarantine. The uh, Department of Science for the productions of these uh, protections of the PPE uh, measures have, uh, have uh, given a call or uh, developed a coverage center for augmenting wear with COVID-19 health crisis. This has been done in IIT Bombay. The IIT Bombay has an, as you know, there is a sign uh, 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 you know, the, the incubator, that which is in uh, sign technology business incubator, which is Society for the Innovations and the Enterprise in IIT Bombay. So here, basically, uh, the incubator uh, will look into the low-cost, safe and effective ventilators de uh, development, respiratory aids, protective gears, novel solutions for the sanitizer, disinfectants, diagnostics, therapeutics, informatics, and many effective interventions for the controlling of uh, COVID-19. And on the right hand side, as you see, the government of India has developed a COVID India Seva uh, 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 Seva. Uh, it's basically a, it is a it is a platform it is aimed at providing real time solutions related queries. People can post their queries and request to the COVID India Seva. Uh, a Twitter will handle and it swift replies for any uh, informations related to the COVID M you get. Then comes the, uh, the, you know, the, the national initiatives in the testing and the diagnostics. There are huge, uh, you know, the initiatives have taken place. I will share with you some of them which are in the uh, some It's are indigenously developed and ICMR approved. Uh, they use DNA, RNA, and the PCR, which is polymerase chain reactions test, could be performed using these kits. These kits can reveal the results within uh, on the 55 minutes. This kit, like I'm talking about, this kit, 
and the key features includes fully automatic device cartridge uh, cartridge based the cartridge is this pcr polymerase chain reactions and the battery operated so dna rna extractions can be done uh, in nearly around 20 minutes this products has been developed and launched in andhra pradesh uh, with the first uh, state uh, set of 1000 rapid uh, you know the testing kits have been developed and been uh, used uh, similarly the rt pcr like in the uh, diagnostic kits this is another reagent based on the real time uh, pcr and the polymerase chain reactions technology for the qualitative detections and differentiations of the lineage of beta uh, beta uh, beta corona virus and severe acute respiratory syndrome corona virus specific rna this product has been developed receives icmr's approval for 100% uh, in the concordance uh, similarly the uh, another real time pcr kit has been developed Uh, as as on the published protocol uh, as on the right hand side you see is published protocol this insulin prevention cdc of us uh, government all high quality reagents required for the test including enzymes of ibd quality are made in house that means in india this product has been developed and is in the manufacturing phase there uh, is a rapid antibody test uh, you know the kit has been developed which is based on immunoglobulin globulin M and immunoglobulin G uh, based test. It involves one step novel coronavirus antibody detections from the human serum, plasma, or the whole blood obtained at the patients. Government, uh, this price is very low. It is since it is three fifty four hundred four hundred rupees per kit. Government is, uh, you know, the planning to use it for mass uh, testing. And the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has already given, uh, you know, the go ahead for production of this kit. Uh, there is an another uh, you know the uh, the immunoglobulin uh, aim and immunoglobulin g antibody detection card which has been created on the right hand side as you see here that this rapid antibody test a quick best test and they can detect the presence of the coronavirus antibody very easily uh, uh, i think the others have to uh, others have to put their audio off otherwise uh, you know the background noise will come so i request others to put their audio off otherwise you know the background uh, uh, you know the resonance will come i request others to as many people are you know the listening and there is a background please put your uh, audio off please uh, we can provide the quick results and this test will allow the doctors to determine if a person's previously had a virus uh, infections and the quick uh, infection other important and the innovative things have been developed about the cart microbiome uh, you the test kit analysis of the gut microbiome can show that how strong you are to fight the infections so manufacturing there is another uh, low cost ultra portable thermal scanner has been developed which measures the body temperatures in the real time and it is uh, having a plug and play feature the product on the right the left hand side as you see there has been developed in technology is ready for the commercializations there is an qxr tool as you on the right hand side see it is basically it's a, it's based on the image analysis it shows that in the how uh, due to the covid infections uh, the lungs of an patients is affected and how its progression takes place that based on the image analysis can be a chitra gen lamp like this is an important uh, you know the product uh, the products which has been developed by the sri chitra uh, institute which is a, a department of science and technology's uh, autonomous institute it is a confirmatory diagnostic test which detects the n gene of the covid 2 using reverse transcriptase loop mediated amplifications of viral nucleic acids and will be done in the world it is me the first few if not the first of its kind in the world so this is a uh, you know like very uh, significant innovation like it has been developed now uh, once you have identified one once you have you know the uh, uh, you have detected you have now uh done the you know your identifications to different test now comes the treatment and the preventions i'm not going into the uh, you know the part of the vaccines because as you know then they regarding vaccines a lot of you know the uh, efforts are going on all over the world as in india and india is also has tied up with the uh, uh, you know the university of cambridge and it's one of the uh, you know the production centers of the possible vaccines but 
will take some time, probably like you know five to four to six months to come. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, like, let us now look into that. How uh, you know as this um, uh, COVID virus is going to stay here, and how we can prevent ourselves. As you know, like all of you, uh, by by this time, all of you know we know like there is a huge awareness about um, creating washing the hand. But uh, basically, what is uh, the science behind it? Let us uh, look into this video. Like it's it talks about like you know what is the science behind that washing. have like the other way is as you know is the hand sanitizer and you know like the alcohol based hand sanitizer let's look into like you know this alcohol based hand sanitizer what is the science behind it uh, so i will again take the uh, help of this uh, you know the video uh, that which talks about that the what is uh, like what is the science behind this hand sanitizer Have enough time to 
Our network of the NGOs, they at the grassroots level was motivated and they As you see here, they are creating uh, SMS-based advisory, community vol volunteers as Corona warriors, helping underprivileged farmers and families, uh, you know, the community level grain banks, they are doing, you know, the medical facility uh, awareness creations and the counseling at the community level, then, uh, you know, the, the community kitchen and the food distributions. Other than that, the, uh, the uh, research institutions are doing it also a lot. There is an, uh, you know, the, uh, in the left hand side, as you see, the Department of Biology in the Ministry of Science, along with the Drug Controller General of India, develop a rapid response regulatory approval, provide the expedited regulatory approval for all the diagnostic drugs and the vaccines. On the right hand side, as you see, there is an antimicrobial, you know, fabric which has been, which is affordable, and the novel textile processing technology. It converts the regular cotton fabric into infection-proof proof, uh, proof uh, fabric. This has been uh, this has has been developed into the analytics from the Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare, and has been tested uh, on uh, in a number of the patients. So, uh, so uh, this is a very uh, you know the important uh, um, uh, you know the development for hand, uh, the handling our life beyond the, the COVID. Similarly, as you see, there is an electrostatic you know face mask. A team of researchers come up with a solution for making this face mask, which is termed tribo e mask. It can hold the electric charges to restrict the density of the infections. And uh, because it has two non contact layers, which is rubbed against each other, and then creates a positive and the negative charges based on which can continue to hold for some time and prevent the, the entry of the virus. This is based on the tribo electricity. Similarly, many other products have been developed and under the process of developing like LED disinfectant systems, uh, 3D printed antimicrobial face shields. An important one is a smart stethoscope. We can listen to the heartbeats from a distance, record them, minimizing the risk of the healthcare professionals contracting the novel coronavirus. This has been developed and patented in operating a startup. The research team has manufactured and sent thousands stethoscopes to the different healthcare and the healthcare centers, healthcare uh, hospitals and centers around the uh, in the country. There are some what has been developed for the isolation wards. As you see, the foot control water has been developed. And the you know the 
one disinfectant has been developed like you know these are will be used during the post heat situations to continue our life disinfection pathway as you see here has been developed there are two variants one is a pneumatic barrier disinfection pathway and the hydraulic barrier Okay. This can be deployed at a multiple critical location as isolation facility, mass transit system, medical centers, and any other locations which has been already tested. A road sanitation unit has been tested by again CSIR institutes uh, under in the on the lower end. And as you see, there is an air on ionizer machines which has been developed in the technology park in uh, you know the Pune, which has been supported again by the Nidhi Prayas program of the Department of Science and Technology. The science behind it is the negative ion generator type layer on helps to control. Uh, it, it, the, it, the machine generates negatively charged ions at approximate 100 million per eight seconds. The negative ion generated by the ionizer form clusters around the microparticles such as airborne mold, corona, influenza virus, and uh, render them inactive by chemical reaction by creating a highly reactive OH group called hydroxyl radicals. And, uh, and uh, HO, which are highly reactive, known as atmospheric detergents. So this is the way, like you know, this, uh, the other uh, innovations which has been brought as a bubble helmet for the ventilations because using ventilators is a challenge. On the right hand side, you see that the Chitra, uh, you know, the uh, acry acrylosorb, like you know, this is an proof and can be scaled after use and with no rights. There's electrostatic disinfection machine has been developed by the, um, you know, the, the, uh, by, again, by the CSIR. Uh, this is an interesting uh, recent development. As you see here, a test kit bus has been developed by the IIT at IIT Bombay, by the IIT uh, you know, alumni. This conducts onboard genetic testing, AI-based uh, teleradiology and contactless RT-PCR swap connections. It can conduct 5 million tests per month per lab, expected to facilitate 100 into the, the increase in testing capacity within 100 years. Uh, uh, there are other developments like disinfectant examinations. This is an interesting that the UV tech fitted sanitizing kits, which has been developed like in a, you can, like it is a challenge for all of us, like in when we bring the, you know, that's thing outside how to disinfect it. So this has been developed, like you can put it here for a half an hour, and it costs the total, uh, you know, 50, uh, uh, 500 rupees. Similarly, a corona oven developed. Um, also, we are working for the, uh, the disadvantaged sections of the community. Uh, this is for the Divyanjans and the elderly. Uh, the Department of Science and Technology has a program called TAI, Technology Interventions for the Disabled and the Elderly. As you see, a e-tool to support the intellectually disabled during COVID-19 has been developed. This shows them the different, you know, the pictures through them and make, make them aware about because for them, uh, you know, the social distancing is a challenge. So how make them aware and, and, and also guide them how to, uh, you know, the behave in these situations. Similarly, on the uh, lower end, you see there, there is some sensors and the wearable devices. These devices, uh, basically the wearable, uh, the wearable devices, it's, it's, it is for the elderly, like, you know, here, through our distance, you can give this, uh, you know, physiotherapy to these elderly who are in isolations or who cannot be reached by the uh, physiotherapist during this uh, uh, the, the time. Similarly, in wearable rehabilitation band has been developed. In these situations, the most important thing is in the boosting your immunity. So the Indian scientists are working on that. At CMAP has developed a cup syrup as well as an immunity boosters. Similarly, a ginger, uh, you know, the beverage uh, has been developed again by the CSIR, and, and a FIFA troll has been developed. This is in six phyto, uh, you know, the chemicals and the five different, uh, you know, the the, the um, uh, herbal things has been uh, added here to improve your. Uh, you know the, the immunity. One interesting, uh, you know, the, uh, the testing has been done by the Sidhu Kanu Birsa University in Purulia, like where uh, we have started a science, technology, and innovation hub. They have uh, developed an immunity village. Here they are using uh, also the Ayurveda knowledge and the local, uh, you know, the knowledge together. They they are um, using herbal formulations. Of turmeric for boosting immunity of the whole village. Though uh, you know the Purulia is not not that in the red zones, but they are making uh, 
uh, the same hour. Now, uh, the last part of my things, which uh, of my this discussions is that uh, we have we know that we have to live with this virus. As uh, now the situation is life versus the livelihood. As you see here, the world economy is not giving a very uh, encouraging picture. Uh, the impact, as it's shown by the KPMG, like you know, the, in India, it will be. Uh, relatively less in all over the world, it will have a huge, uh, you know, the effect on the all the sectors of the, you know, the uh, the macro and the micro e economics. And India, the main focus should be on the how to contain uh, and to improve the situations of the rural population. Seventy percent of them are the workforce, which uh, our workforce resides in the, um, you know, in the rural area. The, uh, the challenges are, as the, the first is the diversifications of the livelihoods, the integrations of the farm, non-farm activity, more affordable, accessible public health, intervention for the most vulnerable sections of the society, SCST, non-city livelihood creations to address the migration, which is a huge problem, as you know now, building green infrastructure, provisions of the basic amenities, and of many... Uh, you know the the uh, vocations which are or, or the uh, skills which can be integrated into the Mandrega. So the opportunity, like you know, uh, we know that this is an uh, it has created in disruptions, but disruption creates the opportunity. What Honorable Prime Minister has told that Jan V Jahabi, like you know, uh, like we have to have a uh, balance between two. The post-COVID era brings also the opportunity, as has been told to the Honorable PM to these interactions with the. Chief Ministers on this 11th of May, and one of the five pillars of the self-reliant, what he has emphasized on this Atma Nirvarata, the self-reliance. Self-reliance India is in the, uh, the 21st century technology-driven system. It indicates the focus of the government on the economic growth and technology. So the indicative pathways for the economic growth should be digital transformation, shift towards localizations, how to use the local resources, supply chain resilience, and the agility, how we can fix and like, you know, how can adopt the situation quickly. The rural urban, uh, urban spread of the economy that this gap needs to be, uh, you know, the, the, the reduced. Such a model can reduce the migrations to the cities, the people who have gone. And in the urban area, this should be the, uh, you know, advantage of the industry 4.0, which is more and more towards the automation. So some of the technological opportunities is a digital economy, information technology like cloud computing, big data analytics, artificial intelligence, uh, healthcare sectors like, you know, value chain diagnosis, nursing, medicines, to relip into the telemedicine aspects, e-commerce, online education. Many of you, the, uh, the, the students who are now stuck into uh, your uh, you know own own home you can, can uh, like you are doing online class but at the same time you can take some some of the local problem and can solve uh, with that so that these educations can be used for the solutions this is the change what we need to do we need to strengthen the rural manufacturing and the social entrepreneurship like, you know, personal equipment can be an opportunity small farm machinery value added food products local resource based entrepreneurships as you see here like you know this but the some of the uh, you know agriculture and allied uh, you know the actives like post harvest processing contractable farming community based horticulture small animal husbandry this is an um, example like in a backyard poultry backyard poultry uh, around 80% of the market only in, in today uh, in india 20% of them are backyard poultry ones which are the dominant now this needs to be probably the time to change and make them uh, in the link with the mainstream uh, the marketing and uh, social entrepreneurship's model needs to be tested uh, we have to strengthen the service sectors and the skill development uh, where in development in the farm non-farm uh, sectors agro advisory services rural rural service center rural health services so services for the elderly can become an opportunity for the self-employment focus on women's entrepreneurship providing work and capital and the training programs to improve their product value and the value chain that is important an expert technology ready for the scaling up, especially for the rural India, promote the concept of the make in India. Uh, so this is from my side uh, and uh, I'm open for uh, any questions. Uh, I think we have around uh, minutes as I have been told. So uh, like, you know, any any uh, interaction if you're on? Uh, I yes, uh, sir. So, uh, yeah. yes, much, sir, for such an informative talk. We did learn a lot 
and uh, there are several questions from uh, the uh, participants so i will uh, start uh, uh, sir, there yeah i'm here i i can see yeah so uh, sir uh, uh, one of the question from uh, several participants is can, uh, ma madam from... and your voice is very less can you come either near because i can hear like yeah it. yeah just a minute sir just a minute yeah yeah now i can hear yeah sir can you hear me now yeah i can hear you now yeah yeah so sir uh, several participants are uh, somewhat curious as who has made a statement that corona will never go away yes. yesterday yes sir so several uh, participants like hriday uh, ranjan giri prem lata they all uh, would like to know that if corona will never go away what is your opinion on that i mean what is your opinion on who saying corona will never go away? Yes, sir. Sir, another question from Parvati Ayer. Yeah, it is that uh, what are the effects uh, ramp up contract tracing and testing uh, by the government? Sir, uh, what are the effects to ramp up? What are the effect efforts that have been taken to ramp up contract tracing and testing? Once this uh, lockdown 4.0 will start, as, as like if you now. Yes, sir. Another question is uh, from Hetal Roy. She uh, he wants to ask whether uh, symptom variation of coronavirus does genetic matter in the symptoms that are uh, people are experiencing the different symptoms that we experience if you are infected by corona. Hello, ha, sir. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, there is a question from Hetal Roy that symptom variation of coronavirus. So does matter in this
so this virus it seems to be uh, uh, you, you know like the, the, the uh, it is mutating uh, yesterday only i was listening to one of the doctors this because of the mutations generally the uh, the virus become weak but since this is a new virus you we do not know whether this mutation because of that it will become weak because there are some 30 mutant vari variants have been and whether it will become strong so we have there we have no other way than to take the precautions and wait for some more time yes sir there is a uh, sir sir uh, am i audible sir so yes uh, yes now hello. i can sir uh, there is yeah. one uh, question from mr kakadia from surat he wants to ask if there are any schemes or projects fund to for the awareness of community fight against corona for some ngos ngo or agencies like that mm. some uh, uh, awareness uh, Yeah, Mr. Gakaria, like you know, as you know, like uh, um, uh, Department of Science and Technology has a NCSTC, National Council for Science and Technology Communication. Like they support this type of awareness creations, and they, here during the COVID specific, there is already a scheme is there. Also, if it is related to the community, as I have told in my talk, that already the seed or the science for society uh, divisions, which I look after, uh, there like, the NGOs can. we just what government snt interventions for the north east regions for the north east region sir Or, or you know, like they facing this virus. Question of Jagbir Bharadwaj who who want. Geographic and fooding habits. Uh, can they be reason for prevent? Then there can they be the tools for preventing corona no, I, from uh, in India? I I think uh, uh, there is no you know till now no study has been done and it hasn't shown that the any particular type of food habit can be because this contamination can take place on any of the foods uh, you know the surface. So uh, obviously. There is a general idea like you know that if you are eating non-veg, the chance of uh, you know uh, uh, contamination is more. But it depends upon that you know how you eating that your food, whether it is veg or non-veg, that that is more important rather than uh, now it has not been proven that you know whether any particular type of a uh, um, food habit or particular geographic areas are more prone. To. Hello. I can't. And here.
Yeah, I can I can see you, like, and I can see you. Okay, you can write.